Amen. Amen. We're going to start there in verse number 13. For ye have heard, did anybody not get their gift? Anybody not get a gift real quick? You didn't get a gift? We'll get you one. All right. Uh, yay. A pink one. Just kidding. Ah. In verse number 13, for ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many mine equals of my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Now, right here in the book of Galatians, he's going through and he's rebuking them for false doctrine. And he starts to explain to them that he himself was unsaved. He starts talking about how profitable he was in the Jews' religion before he got saved. Now, go to 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter number 2. And this phrase, the Jews' religion, is only found a couple times in the Bible. And all the times it's found, it's always negative. It's contrasting salvation and being a Christian with the Jews' religion. And that's this sermon is called, Jews' religion is anti-Christ religion. The Jews' religion is anti-Christ religion. And I think this, it's just, this doctrine of... The Jews' religion, what we would call the religion of Judaism, it's a false doctrine. Amen. It's yep. not Amen. only just a false religion. It is a satanic, yeah. demonic religion. And it is the Amen. number one most preached against religion in the entire Bible. Yes. Other than Baal worship of the Old Testament is the new, is the new Judaism of the New Testament. And we're going to go into some of that, but we're just going to talk briefly Real quick about what does it mean to be anti-Christ religion. Now, I believe this. There's two different anti-Christ. Look at verse number 18. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 18. There's going to be a lot of flipping and a lot of reading, a lot of Bible scripture. A lot of this might be familiar to a lot of people. But I think that this is something that needs to be reiterated and bring to remembrance every so often. Yeah. I believe this, just like I preached against the, the Catholic Church last week. I believe preaching against Judaism is very important, especially as being a fundamental Baptist, because this is a doctrine that the fundamental Baptists, they embrace the Jews' religion. Yeah. Yeah. They want to have fellowship with the Jews' religion, yeah. but the Jews' religion is anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-God the Father, anti-God the Son, yeah, anti-God the Holy Spirit. It's anti-Abraham. It's anti-Moses. It it's it's, it's anti-all of them. It's yeah, anti-me, yeah. my friend. Amen. <laughs> Did I, did I say that it's against the word of God? <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to go in. What does Antichrist mean? Now, look down at verse number 18. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. So he's saying, you have heard that Antichrist, the Antichrist, the man of sin that's going to be revealed in the end, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, that he will come even now. There are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. So he gives two examples there. One is the Antichrist. Now, we're not going to go into it for sake of time in this sermon, but I believe that the Antichrist will be a Jew. Sure. And Deuteron excuse me, in Daniel chapter number 11, it talks about him not regarding the God of his fathers. Talking about the God of the Bible, if you read the chapter. And, but it also talks about now there being many Antichrists. What is an Antichrist? Look at verse number 22. It gives us a definition, but who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So the def biblical definition of an Antichrist is somebody that denies that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, is that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, now go in your Bibles to Acts chapter number 22. Acts chapter number 22. And then flip back over to Galatians. You know what? Just go to Galatians 1. I'll have you go somewhere else here in just a minute. Now, the Bible defines an antichrist as someone that denies that Jesus Christ is either the Son of God, the Christ, or the Messiah. I mean, they're all three, one, the same. You can't say, well, he's the Son of God, but he's not the Christ. You can't say that he's the Christ, but he's not the Son of God. You can't say that he's the Messiah, but he's not the Christ, unless you're Sam Gibb, some Requinite Ruck, idiot. You know what I mean? But let me say this. If you deny that he's the Son of God, if you deny that he's the Christ, 
If you deny that he's the that he's not the Messiah, that he's the Messiah, you are antichrist. Right. Yeah. And the Bible says that the Jews' religion is an antichrist religion. Right. Number right. number one is the purpose of the Jews' religion. What is the purpose of the Jews' religion? Why? What were the Jews going around doing? In verse number thirteen of Galatians one, ye have heard of my conversation in times past of the Jews' religion. Look at this. How that beyond measure. I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. So how did Paul become so prominent in the Jews' religion? Because he persecuted the church of God more exceedingly abundant than the rest of them, and he did it and he wasted it. Talking about he, he destroyed it. Now go to Acts chapter number 22. I had you go to Acts. That I, I had you go, some, I go to Acts chapter number 22. Now, the Bible says, the next verse, And I am profited in the Jews' religion above many mine equals, in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So we said he persecuted the church. He went around killing Christians. He was exceeding zealous in the tradition of his fathers. Now, we'll get into what those traditions are. No one group in the entire Bible, not just New Testament, attacked God's real people like the Jews did. The Bible says, and I'm going to go into all this. You say, well, you're being an anti-Semite. What are you, a, a Nazi or something like that? Look, that's what Paul the Apostle said in Galatians 1, verses 13 and 14. Now we're going to look at Acts 22 about his testimony before he got saved, when he was in the Jews' religion. Look at verse number 3. I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, ye brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the, the perfect manner of the law of the fathers. Notice this. He was not taught the law of God. He's taught the law of the fathers, okay? And was zealous toward God as ye are in this day. And I persecuted this way unto death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. Go back to chapter number 9. So he says right there that he was zealous in the tradition of his fathers. He was taught by Gamaliel, which was a total false prophet. Yeah. And the Bible says that he was a Jew. Now, you got to understand, the Jews are not only a religion, but they're also, also like an ethnicity. Okay? And we'll get into some of that later on. But look down at verse number 1 of Acts chapter number 9. And this is Paul. This is Saul of Tarsus. And Saul... Yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So his job was literally to find and hunt Christians. And the Bible says that when he did that, Comparing to the other people that did the same job as him, he arose above many his equal. The same guys that had the same job, the Bible says he was more profitable in the Jews' religion than all of them. Why? Because he bound more men and women than the rest of them. He killed more men and women than the rest. We see in the book previous, the chapters previous, excuse me, he was there when they stoned the apostle Stephen. He was there when they killed him. They laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. Whose name is Saul. So even as a young man, he was very profitable in the Jews' religion, which was a demonic, which was a bloody religion. Now, you guys go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. I'm going to read for you Matthew 23 because I want you guys to understand that the definition of the tradition of the fathers is not talking about the Bible. It's talking about the tradition of the Pharisees yep. and the tradition of the scribes and the tradition of the Sadducees, which Jesus Christ exposed as being anti-Christ and anti-God's people throughout the entire Bible. I'm going to read for you Matthew 23, 29. This is Jesus preaching, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say... If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, behold, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your skin at synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come 
all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel, and to the blood of Zacharias, the son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. And then he says at the end of the chapter, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them that were, that were sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. So he's explaining to them that the, the Jews were destroying the prophets, not just at the point of Jesus Christ, not just John the Baptist, but all throughout the Old Testament. And he actually even attributes the death of Abel to the Jews' religion. Why? Because it's anti-Christ religion. Yeah. Cain war had an anti-Christ religion. Right. It's the same religion. It's the spirit of anti-Christ that we see in Matthew 23 all throughout the Gospels. And one of the things that marked them is that they were following in the ways of their fathers. And what they were saying is that they had these sepulchers of a prophet. Let's say there's this great prophet that was righteous. He was, a, he was a man of God. They would take this prophet and they would garnish it. And they'd make it beautiful. And they stood back and they said, look, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have killed that guy. And Jesus said, you're testifying out of your own mouth that it's your fathers that killed the prophets. And he's saying, you don't realize it, but you're doing the same exact thing. They killed John the Baptist. They, well, they, they had probably had something to do with him being arrested. We see them throughout the whole book of Acts. Almost every single chapter, yeah. the Jews are persecuting God's people. Now, point number two, and that's just kind of like a, a, a ground for all this. The Jews' religion was not the religion of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, yeah. people will say that Jesus Christ was a Jew. Why can't you guys be preaching against Judaism? Jesus practiced Judaism. Jesus did not practice Judaism. Jesus Christ did, did not practice the Jews' religion because the Jews' religion is antichrist. Now look down at verse number four. The Jews' religion is the enemy religion of the true religion of God, which is a Bible-believing religion. Yeah, right. The Bible says that the main enemy of the church is in the book of Acts for the Jews' religion, and they are the ones that not only persecuted the, the Christians after the death of Christ, it was the Jews that killed Jesus Christ. Now, people will look at the, the four Gospels at the end, and they want to attribute the death of Jesus Christ to only the main scribes, the Pharisees, and just a select group of hierarchy that, were, that had some kind of sway in the government. But the Bible is clear that it was the entire nation that delivered up Jesus Christ to be killed. Look at verse number 14. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse number 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, you guys are following the churches that are in Judea. He's saying, you guys are looking at what they're doing, and you guys are doing, you're taking the same steps of action like they're doing. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, as, excuse me, even as they have of the Jews. So he's telling these people in Thessalonica, look, you guys are receiving persecution of your own countrymen, of the same people that are in your own nation, just like the churches that are in Judea are, have and are of the Jews. Look at verse number 15. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sin alway for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Now, I don't see how you can read those three verses and say the Jews' religion is a religion that we need to have fellowship with. You know, bless the yeah. Jews. Bless those that killed the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless those that killed the prophets. Bless those that persecuted Paul and the apostles. Bless yeah. those that please not God. Bless those that are contrary to all men. Bless those that fill up their sins always. And bless those who the wrath of God is upon to the uttermost. That is very clear. And yeah, we're going to get into the scriptures. Go to John chapter number 7. Now the doctrine of the Jews are still God's chosen people is so foreign to scripture right. that it just boggles my mind that some people are so set on this doctrine, this false doctrine of this, you know, Judeo-Christian. I'm not Judeo-Christian. I'm a Christian. Amen. Okay? Now the doctrine of the Jews are still God's chosen people. You mix that with the pre-tribulation rapture, and I'm super confused. Because this is the, this is the whole mindset behind the pre-tribulation rapture. God would never pour his wrath out on his own people. 
That's what they say, right? Yeah. So therefore, whoop, we're going to be out of there before the tribulation. Because they think the tribulation is a seven-year period where God pours out his wrath. And they say, well, what's the tribulation for? They're like, well, that's for the Jews. Who are the Jews? They're God's chosen people. Yeah. So if God would never pour out his wrath on his own people, and the Jews are God's chosen people, then isn't he pouring his wrath out on his own people? No, because we're going to get raptured. What? Uh... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think, I don't understand. Do you see that? that, 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 yeah. that it's almost like when you yeah, see, yeah. like, like the, the robot that is. <laughs> it's like the pre-tribulation Zionist pro-Jew robot. It's just eventually you keep talking and they're just going to, like, explode. Their eyes are going to come out like slinkies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now go to John chapter number 7. Now, if you have, the Bible says that the, the Bible is clear that there's one God. Okay. Now, people want to separate the Trinity too far where they want to say that like there's three gods. Or they say that Jesus Christ is not God. Okay? Jesus Christ is God. Amen. There's the God the Father, God the Son, the God the Holy Spirit all make up one God. Right. Amen. Three persons, one God. I know, man, we've heard this a bunch of good preaching about this lately. But I tell you this, <laughs> the Jews want to act like there's only God the Father and they deny the Son. The Bible's clear. If you deny any single part of the Godhead, you don't have any of it. That's right. You can't have two-thirds of it. You can't have one-third of it and still be saved. Either you have 100% or you have no percent. The Bible says if you have not the Son, you have not the Father. The Bible says if you have not the Spirit of God, you're none of His. So you can't deny any single part of the Godhead. Now, I'm going to read for you Acts chapter 13. And, or excuse me, Acts chapter 3, you're in John 7. You can go to Acts 3 if you want, if you can make it there. And verse number 12, this is Peter speaking and preaching to the Jews, to the people at the, in the, in, at the day of Pentecost. And Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though this is when they actually healed a man in Acts 3. Why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son, Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof ye are witnesses. You say, well, who was the one who killed the Prince of Life? Well, ye men of Israel, says in verse number 12. Yeah. He's preaching to the men of Israel. Right. He's not preaching to the scribes and Pharisees. He's preaching. This guy got healed. The guy's jumping up and down. All the people, all these Jews come running up to see what's going on. He starts preaching to them. And who does he blame for killing up and delivering up and denying the Lord Jesus Christ? He preaches to them. Yeah, that's right. He didn't say, oh, your leaders just, is, I know you guys didn't do it. I know it was just that those couple of guys in the in the in the building there. No, he gave them. He put the blame on them. Now go to Gala go to John chapter number seven. And he says Jesus did not believe in Judaism. Amen. He was not raised in Judaism and then created some new religion. He always it was all it's Christianity. What we would call Christianity has always been the religion of the Bible. Yeah. Okay, he told Nicodemus that you had you must be born again. And Nicodemus acted like this was some new thing. And he said, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Yeah. He wasn't making up some new religion. He was continuing the religion. Was, there's a New Testament, but it's the same religion. It's all worshiping the same God, which is not the God of the Jews, which is not the God of the Jews' religion. Now, the Jews' religion was against Jesus Christ. It was against his followers after his death. It was against him during his ministry. Look at verse number one. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Yeah. I mean, is that any more? You would not. Can you imagine if I went out and said, like, let's say we're in some 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 neighborhood in New York or in some big city where it's very segregated in different areas where you had like, and I said, I don't want to walk in Jewry. In Jewry, people would think I was a racist. Yeah. yeah. But what if I was just quoting John chapter 7, verse 1? I said, and then it says the Jews wanted to kill Jesus Christ. Yeah. Look at verse number 13. How be it? No man spake openly of him, 
for fear of the Pharisees. Is that what it says? For fear of the Sadducees. For fear of the Jews. Go to John chapter number five. Why? Because they hated Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They always hated Jesus Christ way back from Cain all the way till now to the end of the world. Yeah. The Jews' religion is anti-Christ religion. Now, right. Judaism is anti-Bible religion. The Jews' religion is anti-Bible religion. Yeah, Bible right. from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, they're against the Bible. They're not just foreign to Scripture. They're not just a little bit messed up on some Scriptures. They don't just believe a part of the Bible. They are anti-every single word of the entire Bible. Amen. Why? How do you know that? Well, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was the Word of God. Now, the Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him and was not anything made. Without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus Christ in the book of John is first referenced and called the word of God. In the Old Testament, he's called the word of God. Now, if I said to you, you know, what is the word of God? You would say, well, that's scripture. That's the Bible. And you would be right. Jesus Christ is the words of God made. In verse 14, it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Look at verse number, you guys are in John 5. I'll read for you verse 11. He, the word, came unto his own, and his own received him not, the Bible says. So Jesus Christ, the word of God, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Many times he said, you reject me, you don't understand my words. You don't understand the words of God. You don't understand the words of Moses. You don't understand the words of Abraham. Because the words of Moses... The words of Abraham, the words of the prophets, they are the word of God. And he, they rejected all of it. Look at John 5 and verse number 45. You cannot reject Jesus and believe the Bible. That's right. You cannot reject the Lord Jesus Christ and say you believe the Bible. If you say that, you're a liar. Yeah, that's right. You can't say, I believe the Old Testament, but I don't believe in Jesus. No, you do not. Right. It's it's. I know that we call them sixty six books, but it's one book. It's one Bible. Yeah. It's the Word of God. Now look down at verse number forty five. The Jews' religion was not. It's anti Bible. Next point: the Jews' religion is anti Moses. Moses did not practice the Jews' religion. How do you know? Because they rejected Moses. They didn't believe Moses. Look at verse forty five. Think not that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For if ye had believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? He said, there is one that accuseth you. Not just me, and not just the Father. There's another one that's accusing you, he tells the Jews. He says, Moses is accusing you. You know what I'm saying? Moses don't believe in your religion. Why? Because you guys don't believe in Moses' writings. Go to John chapter number 8. They didn't believe in the writings of Moses. They didn't believe in the writings of Moses then. They didn't believe in the rising, writings of Moses in the Old Testament during the prophets. That's why they were taken away captive in the first place. Because they didn't believe the word of God. Then, they, 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 don't, they definitely don't believe in the, the writings of Moses now. Yeah. Okay? Now, most I've seen, I, I was going to write down a bunch of statistics about people that call themselves Jews now and how religious they are. And if they, that's, you'll be surprised. They did a, a like some kind of a poll um, where they went around and asked a bunch of American Jews like how, like only like 30% of them actually consider Judaism to be any, like the religion of Judaism, to have any kind of influence in their normal life. They're almost like atheistic. They, yeah, they almost yeah. don't even care about anything. I mean, they're a lot of them are just complete reprobates. And we'll get into that later on. So this is what the religion of Judaism basically is in a nutshell. It's basically a bunch of white people that cling to being Jewish just so they can get special rights that regular white people can't get. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically yeah. what they are. You know, I mean, that's, a, that's a fact. You know, I mean, they're white people that cling to being Jewish so they can get special rights. So if you say anything against any of them, then you're automatically anti-Semitic. You're automatically a Nazi by saying that Sarah Silverman 
is a blasphemous whore yeah. that should Amen. be that belongs in the that that belongs in the gutter. You know Amen. what I mean? Okay. Oh, you're anti-Semitic. I'm anti her. I'm anti Jews religion. Yeah. Amen. Label it whatever you want. That's what the Bible teaches. Moses was anti Jews religion. Abraham was anti Jews religion. Look That's at right. John eight and verse number thirty seven. The Jews religion was not Abraham's religion. It was anti Abraham. Right. That's right. Look at verse thirty seven. Know that ye are Abraham's. Uh, he said. They said. Uh, they start arguing with Jesus Christ in John 8, and he, they said, we are Abraham's seed. Now, they were Abraham's seed physically, but look what he says. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, look at this, because my word hath no place in you. Now, it says it hath no place, meaning this, there's nowhere for it to be. Yeah. Why? And where would the word be sown? When you sow the word in somebody, where does it go? Heart. It goes in their heart. Their, their heart is hardened. There's no place for it. There's yeah. nowhere you can put it. Yeah. These guys were reprobates. That's Look right. at verse number 38. I speak that which you have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. Look at verse number 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, and I have, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. So he's kind of baiting him. He keeps saying, like, you're the deeds of your father. You're the father. No, we're Abraham. No, your father. Your father. And then they said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one f father, even God. Jesus saith unto him, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot even hear my word? He said, Because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. So, the Jews' religion is anti-Moses. It's anti-Abraham. It's also anti-God the Father. Yeah. Because they were of their father the devil. Yeah. Now look at this right here. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you a truth, you believe me not. He said, if I told you a lie, you'd believe it. If I told you that up was down and down was up, you'd believe it. If I told you that the sky was, you know, made of, you know, some of, that the clouds are made of marshmallows, you'd believe it. Why? Because you're of the devil and the devil is the father of lies. Just because I'm preaching something that's truth, you resist it. You cannot, you cannot even bear the truth. He's saying you reject it. Now, you got to go to two places with your finger. You got to go to Galatians 3 and go to Genesis chapter number 12. We're going to be reading out of Genesis 12 first, but then we're going to be going and comparing with Galatians 3. And we're not going to stop in Genesis 12. We're going to go to several parts in the book of Genesis dealing with Abraham. Now, they will say this. He said, so the Jews' religion was not the Father's religion. People say, oh, well, they worship God the Father. They don't worship God the Son. They do not worship God the Father. Yeah, right. They are anti-God the Father because they're anti the Word of God. Amen. They're anti-Moses. Yeah. They're anti-Abraham. They're anti-Abel. I mean, it goes back that deep. You know what I mean? Sometimes you'll see some things and it's like, it goes a little bit deep and then you find out, wow, that goes back really far. This vendetta, this, or this thing. The Jews' religion and their satanic wickedness goes all the way back to the very first murder. That's true. Because it was a devilish religion. Yeah. And the Jews' religion follows the devil, their father, and he was a murderer from the beginning. Amen. Now, Amen. Genesis 12, people will say, well, if you, you got, God promised that if we bless the Jews, we will be blessed of God. And he said, if you curse the Jews, you're going to be cursed of God. Book, chapter, verse. Genesis 12 says that. Does it? No, it does not. Yeah. Okay? And the Bible is, I love the Bible. The Bible has all the answers. And the answers Amen. are just plain as day. But you, this is the thing with the Bible is you have to want to believe the Bible. Yeah, that's right. If you don't want to believe the Bible, you won't see it in there, even if you're saved. If you just don't want to see it and you're just being stubborn and rebellious and yeah. stiff-necked, God's not going gonna, gonna, gonna to just force-feed you truth. You have to want to receive it. And most of 99.9% .9 of Christianity does not receive this because they, uh, they, don't, they don't want to. They like living in this fairy tale world. Yeah. And, and, and it's, 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 it's actually very wicked. It's yeah. not just wrong. It's very wicked. 
Now, I remember when I first learned this, I remember telling somebody and they told me, you better be careful because it sounds like you're cursing the Jews. And if you curse the Jews, they're going to curse you. And I heard a preacher one time tell me that believes like we believe. He said, look, when he started believing, his dad was a pastor. His dad said, look, I, I'm afraid for you that God's going to kill your whole family because you are cursing the Jews. And it's like, well, show me where, that, where the Bible says that. And I'll show you where they go to. Look at Genesis 12 and verse number 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham. So who is the Lord speaking to? Abraham. Abraham. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. So the, in the King James Bible, we have these and thous and these and yours, and people complain about that. But that is actually, I love the way that the, that the King James Bible is written. Yeah, yeah, um, right. Far beyond just it being the perfect word of God, it's, just, it's great that, that, that this, is the, 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 this is how he decided to, to, to inspire his word. Because the these, the thous, thine, and thys, all the T words are singular. Yeah. Like if I was speaking, we got a group of guys here. We have six guys. If I said to Jesse, thee, thy, and thine, I'm speaking just to him. Now, King James Bible, the way it's written, if I said ye, you, your, it could be to all of them. It could be to a select group of them. That's how the Bible's written. God is talking specifically to Abraham, and he tells him, you need to get out from your kindred, from your father's house, and you need to go into a land that I'm going to show thee. Look at verse number two. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So he says right there, it's thee, you, Abraham. If anybody curses you, Abraham, I'm going to protect you. So give me a story. He goes into, what, he go into Egypt? Yeah. And remember, the, 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 the king wanted to take his wife, and what happened? What did God do? He cursed his whole, his whole nation. Why? Because he was not being a blessing to Abraham. Now, he didn't even know what was going on, but that is the protection that God gave Abraham. Yeah. Because he promised Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 and 2, that if anybody blessed him, they would be blessed. If anybody be cursed him, they would be cursed on Abraham. Then, look at verse number 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So he told him, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Now notice, I don't know if you highlight or you circle or you underline, if you like to do that type of thing in the Bible, it's, you need to make mention that it says in verse 7, unto thy seed. Go to chapter number 13. Go to the next chapter over. Look at verse 15. For all the land which thou seest, I will, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed be also numbered. Look at, look at Genesis 15, verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, If thou be able to number them, and he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. Genesis 17, verse number 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. And to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee a land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now go to Galatians chapter number 3. You notice every time he's mentioning this promise to Abraham, he keeps telling him thy seed, thy seed. And it's always singular. And he say, well, that's just the way he worded it. Yeah, that's the way he worded it. But the Bible says in the New Testament... That God makes it a point to make to draw attention to the fact that it's written like that. Look at verse number 16. Galatians 3, 16. Talking about the promises made to Abraham and to his seed. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So the, the, the blessings that were in the Old Testament that we see in Genesis 15 through the, the 20 chapters, that were to Abraham, they were to two people. They were to Abraham and to a seed. And it specifically says that in verse number 16, and to thy seed, which is 
Christ. To, say, to thy seed which are the Jews, to thy seed which are the nation of Israel, the Israelites, thy seed which is Christ. Yeah. The Amen. seed that it was talking about was the Messiah, yeah. was yeah, the right. Christ. Good. Jesus Christ is the seed Amen. that God Good. would bless all the nations of the earth through. Look at verse number six. Go back a little bit. Even as Abraham believed God and was counted him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Look at verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The seed is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the Bible says that the Scripture foresaw that, that God would justify the heathen. He, that's what the whole purpose was to save the entire world, to get the gospel the whole. Now, obviously, the majority of the world is not going to be saved because broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, but the Bible is saying the blessing in Genesis 12 is to his seed. And that if you bless, I will bless thee, and the cursing I will curse thee is to Abraham. That's what it says. If somebody curses Abraham, they will be cursed. If somebody blesses Abraham, they will be blessed. Now, Abraham's in heaven now. The Bible says that Abraham rejoiced to see the day of the, day of the Lord Jesus Christ. He rejoiced to see his day. He was he thought it was great. Why? Because Abraham was a Christian. Yes. Abraham right. was a Christian. Yeah. Moses was a Christian. Okay, the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, they were Christians because they believed in Christ. They yeah. believed in the right. Messiah. Right. They believed in the Bible, the Word of God, which the Jews' religion completely rejects. Go to Mark chapter number 3. They completely reject it. The Jews' religion is against Moses because they don't believe it. They actually, they not only do they not believe it, they reject it and they preach against it. They're against Abraham. They're against the Bible. They're against Jesus. They're against the Father. And they're against the Holy Spirit. And I will tell you this. The Jews' religion is a reprobate religion. Yes. Right. The Jews' religion is a reprobate religion. What is a reprobate? Reprobate is somebody that rejects God to a point where God hardens their heart. And then his word has no place in them. It's yeah. where they can't be saved. Now people say, well, you believe in Calvinism where God only saves certain people. No, these people had a chance. Yeah. Yea, have they not all heard? The Bible says in, in, in Romans chapter 10, yeah. yea, verily they have heard. Their sound went into all the earth, the Bible said. Yeah. The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. Why? Because it's in the scripture. Yes. You know what I mean? They, they read the scripture daily. And daily Jesus, when he was walking in with them, he, he spoke them, and they just rejected it over and over. And... They are a reprobate. That's what a reprobate is. The, a reprobate is somebody that cannot believe. The Bible says, I think in John chapter 12, that even though he had done so many miracles among them, yet they could not believe. Not that they, they called upon, they believed, they called upon the Lord, and God said, no, you're a reprobate. No, I don't want to save you. Because for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. They, could not, they could not believe it. They rejected it. Even when they knew he rose from the dead, they commanded that they, pay, and they paid all the officers off and said, hey, you guys need to tell everybody yeah. that they stole his body away. Yeah. So even though they knew he rose from the dead, they didn't believe on him. Right. They, couldn't, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't muster up. They couldn't, they couldn't do it. They, to them, it's just like a fable. They, just, they, they couldn't believe it. That's right. Now you say, well, why do you say that the whole religion is reprobate? Now I'll tell you this. That doesn't mean 100% of the Jews are all reprobates. Not even 100% of the ethnic Jews are even unsaved. There's always a remnant. But I will tell you why I say, and the Bible would say, that the Jews' religion is a reprobate religion. Because there are certain things you can do, the Bible says, to where God will harden your heart and make it impossible for you to believe. Uh, and the, the main one is blaspheming the Holy Ghost. We've all heard that, right? Blasphemy the Holy Ghost. And Pentecostals, they believe blasphemy the Holy Ghost, saying that when they speak in tongues and they fall on the ground and they bark like a dog, that, they're, that that's not real. That's not what blasphemy the Holy Ghost is. Look at verse number 22. Let's let the Bible define everything, right? I mean, we have to go to the Word of God to define what the Bible says. 
The Bible is clear what blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is. Look at Mark 3, verse number 22. It says, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of devils casteth he out devils. So they said that Jesus Christ had Beelzebub. They said he was demonic, that he was full of Satan. Beelzebub is Satan. Yeah. They said he cast out de devils by Beelzebub. Like they said that Jesus Christ was a sorcerer and he got his power from Satan, that he was filled with Satan. Now look at verse number 28, a couple verses down. Because he starts going into, a, uh, can a you know, kingdom be divided, you know, and that type of thing. Look at verse 28. But I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. He's saying, you guys can blaspheme against God, that can be forgiven. But there's one blasphemy that cannot be forgiven. Look at verse 29. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. He said, never forgiveness. That's pretty harsh. You say, well, what is, why? Look at the next, look at the next verse. It tells us what blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is. Because they said, in verse 22, because they said he had an unclean spirit. So the literal definition of blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is somebody that says that Jesus Christ has an unclean spirit. That's what blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is. Go to e Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. Anyone that says that Jesus Christ was filled with devils is, is going to be, if they believe that, they become reprobate. Yeah. God says that's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, never forgiveness. Yeah. Now you say, well, that's really strange. Who really does that now? I mean, in 2017, nobody really says that. I will tell you this, that Muslims don't say that. The Catholics don't say that. The Buddhists and Hindus, they don't think they say that. I don't know exactly what they believe. I know this, uh, atheists don't even say that. There's one religion that believes that, and they teach that. And the tradition of their fathers, not in what they would call the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, but the Talmud, which is their religious books, teaches that Jesus Christ was a sorcerer. I'm going to read for you some things that the Talmud has to say about Jesus, about his mother, about the birth, and also about who he was. In the Talmud, it actually calls Jesus Christ, it refers to him as Balaam. Now, if you look in the Old Testament, Balaam was a sorcerer, was a soothsayer, was a very wicked person in Numbers 22. Yeah. And it actually almost insinuates like Jesus Christ was like a resurrection of Balaam. Like he was Balaam, like the spirit of Balaam. Now, it says that Jesus' mother was a, a whore. It says in the Sanhedrin 106a that she was a, a, a hairdresser or a hairstylist of some kind. And she was the descendant of princes and governors. She played the harlot with carpenters and soldiers. It also says, and I can't pronounce these right because I'm not, you know, one of these phony baloney preachers that tries to like sound like, you know, I know all the Jewish words. You know, I can't, they can't just say Israel. They have to say like Israel. They have to say it all funny <laughs> to make them sound smarter. It, they say that it say that uh, the Talmud that that Jesus was his mother Miriam the headdresser the hairdresser had relations with many men, it says. That's what it says about Mary. She had this relations with many men. It says in, in Yebamoth 49b, page 324, that Jesus was a bastard born of adultery. It says Mary was a whore and Jesus, Balaam, and in Balaam, and if you look down to the footnotes, it says this is Jesus. Uh, was an evil man full of sorcery, that he was a magician and a fool, and Mary was an adulteress. Now, it says that he is in hell boiling in hot excrement in Gittin 57a. It says that, may his name be wiped out forevermore, that he was, that Jesus was sexually immoral and worshipped a brick in the Sanhedrin 107b. It says that he was cut off from the Jewish people for his wickedness and refused to repent. And that, her, again, it talks about Mary being the descendant of princes and being and uh, delivering him up and, and uh, or, uh, conceiving him th through adultery and through fornication and that type of stuff. Wicked. Now, go in your Bibles to Galatians 5 and verse number... That's super wicked. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's pretty damning evidence right there. Yeah. Amen based upon their own sayings, and even way more importantly, based upon what the Bible says. Yeah. 
But they've changed, right? They don't. They probably don't believe that anymore. Now, there's a good chance most of them really don't believe that anymore. Thank God, right? But look down at verse number 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So you've got to prove with the word of God what is acceptable. Is that acceptable? Can you show me a verse in the Bible where these people are accepted? I can show you a verse in the Bible where the Bible says that they are, uh, where are we at here? That they are contrary to all men. That they are wicked people. That God curses and God hates. Look at this, verse number 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Any church, any Christian that desires to have fellowship with somebody that practices the Jews' religion, especially somebody who's a rabbi, they are wicked. They are having yeah. fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. There is no darker religion on earth than the Jews' religion. Biblically speaking, that's a fact. It is. Show me another religion in the Bible that's preached at more. It's always the Jews' religion. Yeah. You say, what about Baal and Balaam of the Old Testament? Who was worshiping Baal and Balaam that God got so mad about? It was the, it was the Jews. It was the, that was their yeah. religion. Even now, I'm not going to go to the verses because we're getting ready to wrap it up. Their little Star of David, there's no mention of the Star of David in the entire Bible. The only star that we can see is in two places. It talks about the Star of Renfam, which is Satan. It's demonic. And it's funny because that's what they look at and say, that's, this is our Star of David. And there's so many other things that they could say that I could read out of their own, uh, their wicked book, the Talmud. I remember one time seeing somebody, I went to a different church that I went to, and they posted on Facebook, and they asked, D didn't the Jews believe that Jesus is, is burning in hot excrement? And I remember somebody getting up and saying, like defending the Jews and saying, oh, they're God's chosen people. You need to be careful what you say and blah, 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 blah. Look, how can you justify the wicked like yeah. that? Wow. How can yeah. you justify the Jews? Look, John Hagee and these people, they are not just misled. They are not just wrong about a few things. They are evil. Yeah. They are demonic. Yeah. Yeah. They are satanic. They are antichrist. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, uh, for coming to earth and dying for us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us on the cross. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit that can lead us into all truth. And we thank thee for every part of the Godhead. We need it all, Lord. Thank you for every word of scripture that you've given us. From Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 22, Lord. We need it all to live. And we need it all to be uh, uh, watchful for the, 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 the darkness that's coming upon this world, Lord. And there's definitely a great falling away. And we can see it before our eyes, Lord. Help us to understand the severity of wicked religions and, and demonic, blasphemous religions, Lord. Especially ones that you've, you've pointed out in the Bible. And Lord, we love you, Lord. And we want to please you, Lord. We want to we wanna preach the gospel and get people saved, Lord. And I pray that you would help us to be filled with your spirit to do so. And Lord, we love you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.